Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to teach you how to deal with forces on an inclined plane. And then we're going to apply it to the problem I set up in class. We're going to roll a card on the inclined plane and predict how fast it's going. So this front page is kind of a combination of both. We're going to solve the problem, but in the meantime, we're going to learn how to figure out the acceleration of something on an inclined plane based on the forces. And the star of this show is going to be gravity. Uh, and then what we're going to do is show how to take the gravitational force and break it into components because when you're sitting on a ramp, that's what essentially happens to that force. And then you're going to try to do some problems in general, um, and then we'll do more practice from there. Okay, so let's look at our problem. We have a frictionless cart, or as close as we can. It sits on a ramp pitched at an angle of, let's say, I believe it's set up for 10 degrees. And we are going to release it 0.7 meters from the top and it has a mass of 0.75 kilograms. We want to know how fast we'll be going when it gets to the bottom. So in other words, we're looking for V, final velocity. So we need an equation for the velocity at the bottom based on kinematics. And what do we know? Well, we know a distance, x. We know the initial speed. It's assumed it's, re it's released from rest, so V0 is 0. Oops, not VI. And so we need one other piece of information. And this is where the ramp comes in. We need to know what rate it's going to gain speed, what rate it's going to accelerate. So if we, assuming we have A, which we'll get, and we are looking for our final velocity and we know a distance, and that equation that screams for final velocity is V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. Okay. So that leads to the next question. In other words, we're doing a derivation here. How do we determine acceleration? Well, we've been practicing that for a while now, so you should be able to answer easy. Just use, waiting for it, there you go, second law of motion. Because in the second law of motion, acceleration is really the star, right? So what is it? A is simply F net over M. Okay, so if we look, better and look back at our information, oh, we have the mass of the car. We're good. Well, crud, we don't have the net force, so we ask the question, how do we determine the net force? Well, we've been doing this for quite a while now, and that's easy. Just draw a FBD. Okay, so I would like you to do that right now, because it's a good problem. You'll most likely see it again on a quiz or a test. Here is the ramp. Here is the car. It's frictionless draw an FBD. Do it in pencil because if you make a mistake, you're going to want to erase it. But it's really good practice for you to see if you can take what you already know. There's no new forces in this situation and apply them correctly. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and you should pause here. Okay, so let's go through the list. Is there an external applied force pushing or pulling the car? Now, there's nothing in contact with it that's really doing that, so the answer is no. Next one is there gravity. Of course there's gravity. So gravity is always which way? Straight down. So I'm assuming you had a gravity, but maybe, maybe it changed it because of the ramp. The ramp doesn't change the fact that gravity is always straight down. All right, next, is there any resistive forces? The answer is no. There's no friction. We're told this is a frictionless situation, and drag is negligible when we're not moving. Uh, tension? Nope, there's no string of rope. Normal force. Is this resting on a surface? Yes, it is. It's resting on the ramp. And a normal force means normal because it's perpendicular, so you should add a normal force. That is that way. So there's really only two forces here. Okay, now, what's the point of the force diagram? Well, let's define F net. So if we want to express F net here, we really can't do it easily algebraically because FG and FN aren't pointing in the same direction. They're not even in opposite directions. So I can't say that the net force is FG minus FN. It does not work. You can only say minus if it's directly opposite of it. However, we can draw the net force using by adding net force means the sum of all the forces. So we can do this graphically. In other words, I could draw the resultant of those two forces. So I'm going to draw a parallelogram. I'm going to use that method. So with the idea that the net force is the vector sum. So I made this and this parallel, this and this in parallel. So my net force is from the beginning of one to the end of the other. And there's F net. And that should make sense. That's telling us that the car is going to accelerate down the ramp that way in the direction of F net. Wow, that's, per that's exactly what we want. 
The trick is, how do we calculate F net? Well, that's where we're going to learn the, that's where the new material is going to come in. Okay, so what I'm about to show you to the right here is how to ultimately figure out F net. And to do that, we're going to break, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to break the weight component, the weight vector, into components, not the normal force. So there's F net, and we'll show you how that we can arrive at that a slightly different way. Okay, so I'm looking at this diagram here, and I've just zoomed in on a car, and here is the FG uh, vector. So, and this is where you've got to let me know in class, or even questions in the tutorial, if this does not make sense. We can take this downward vector and break it into two components, where this component is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So what I want to be able to do is draw the legs of that triangle. So one of the legs of that triangle would be perpendicular to the surface. And the other leg would be parallel to the surface, such that these are right angles. So take a look at that carefully. I am calling that FG perpendicular. And I'm going to call this FG parallel. I'm not going to use X and Y here because it's neither horizontal nor vertical. And then before I fill in this triangle. So again, let me reiterate. The weight, which is pulling straight down this way, can be thought of, because the ramp is tilted, as distributed differently, where some of the weight, let me just right, draw the FG one here, some of the weight is pushing into the ramp, okay? In other words, if I were the ramp, or the car was sitting on me, I'd feel it pushing into me perpendicular, and the rest of the weight is perpendicular, or parallel, excuse me. Now, instead of me drawing the arrow up here, it makes sense to complete my triangle down there, because I'm going to use trigonometry for that one. Okay, now, the hard part in this is understanding where the angle of the ramp is, right? In this drawing, if I go back over here, here is the angle the ramp is pitched. Somewhere in this triangle is that theta. That might not be obvious to you. I will show you a way of understanding that in class tomorrow, but for right now, accept that this angle within the triangle is the same as the ramp angle. Okay, so let's run with this. Now I'm going to go below, because now we have a vector triangle. We can do the components. And by the way, let's just say FG is nothing more than M times G. That's going to be useful. All right. So from the diagram, we need an equation for parallel and perpendicular components. So um, I, got, I have this written as W. Let's call it FG parallel. Okay, FG parallel. How would we calculate that? Well, if I go to my diagram here, it's this component. And I see that that component is opposite the angle theta. So that's a clue as to what trig function I want to do. So what I would say, and I'm going to write that over here, is that FG parallel is equal to, um, sorry, I don't want to make that, is equal to the weight, which I'm going to call MG, times the sine of the ramp angle. Okay, so if you don't quite see that, let me do it here. So if I do sine, so I could say the sine of that angle, that triangle, you don't have to write this right, this angle is opposite, which is FG parallel, over hypotenuse, which is FG, which I'm going to equate to MG. So if I move the MG over here, that's where the MG sine theta comes from. If I do the same thing with W parallel, or FG parallel, or FG perpendicular, yikes, then this is the component. I see it's adjacent to the theta, so I would say that FG parallel is equal to the weight times the cosine of the angle. Okay, for the same reason that I did over here, I would say cosine of the angle is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now, you don't have to memorize that derivation. It's good enough to, in fact, I'll let you write that down in your reference tables. It's not written down in your reference tables, but I suggest you do so. Um, because I don't want you to have to memorize it, and you, you should be able to derive it. Uh, there are ways of remembering that the parallel goes by the sine and the cosine. I'll talk to you about in the class. So let's talk about these forces a little bit more. If I go, if I look at this diagram again more carefully, I have the, I've taken the weight component, this one, and broken into these two. Don't forget there's still the normal force. And so what I want you to see is that the normal force and the perpendicular component 
must balance out. Otherwise, the car would have to accelerate in this general direction, which it clearly doesn't. So that's important because that's a way of calculating the normal force. We see that, then I'm going to go down to B below, that right here, this component is also equal and opposite to the normal force. We're going to see that that's really important when friction becomes involved because we know friction depends on the normal force. So again, look at those. So if these two are balanced, that means they cancel out. That leaves the net force is just this. And look at which way that's pointing. It's pointing parallel to the ramp, which is exactly what we see here. So our net force, when we're trying to figure out a car rolling down a ramp when there's no friction, is nothing more than the parallel component of its weight. So we'll go back to that in a second. There's another thing I set up here. This is also the force needed to pull the car up the ramp. So let's say, let me erase some things here. And I'll eventually come back to that. Let's say I wanted to raise the car up here by applying a force. Well, if I wanted to move it up at a constant speed, this applied force is being fought or being opposed by mg sine theta, the parallel component of the weight. And that's what I want you to recognize from here on. So if I want to know how much force I have to apply to push something up a ramp, then this is how much force I have to apply. If there's friction, then I'd have additional force, and we'll learn how to calculate that, I'm just building on what we already know. Okay, but let's get back to the task at hand. So we're trying to figure out the acceleration of the car down the ramp. In order to do that, we need to know the net force. And so we just established that the net force acting on the car is Fg parallel. So let's put it all together. So we know that A is F net over M, and F net, we said, is Fg parallel all over M. And how do we calculate Fg parallel? Well, we saw right here it's M g sine theta divided by m oh look at that and we see that the masses cancel out and look at this equation that makes a lot of sense in hindsight why well what's accelerating the car it's gravity so we'd expect the acceleration to be the acceleration due to the gravity but not quite because we're not going straight down. We're going at an angle. So this part tells us how much of little g we're getting. In other words, sine of an angle is always between 0 and 1, which means our acceleration is always going to be a fraction of g, which makes perfect sense. If our ramp is pitched this way, in other words, theta is 0, you know there's going to be no acceleration because sine of 0 is 0. If we turn our ramp and make it vertical, and here's the car, right? It's going to be in free fall because the angle is 90 degrees and the sine of 90 is 1. And so our acceleration will be g. So that's pretty cool. We don't need to know the mass. And that's consistent with what we know about gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is independent of mass. And we can understand that because we have more force when you have more mass, but you also have more inertia. So anyway, independent of mass. So now we can go back and solve the problem below. So this is what I want you to do on your own. You put the numbers I've given in, use the equation, show the equations here, and come up with a prediction for velocity based on a distance. Tomorrow in class, we will test it out by rolling it down. Okay? Eventually, you're going to be assigned problems to do. I suggest you do them tonight. I'm not going to require them tonight because you already have another practice set to do or to finish up on friction. Or maybe you don't. It depends on what year I'm teaching this. Sorry, ignore that. But um, if you're not in that situation, I would go ahead and get these practices in because here are the answers. And that way you can come into class and gauge how well you're getting this.